So the draft primary curriculum uh, and education or indoctrination for social justice. That's the concern in a nutshell. So that's a one-liner concern. And we'll talk about why we have that concern. There's a definite social justice and environmental sustainability, global citizenship type agenda here, which if you were to go on to the UNESCO uh, education material, you'll probably see very similar language and objectives. Not sure if it's coming from there or somewhere else. There's this new subject called social and environmental education, which the minute I saw it, I just said, well, that's the vehicle for part of this agenda for sure. It incorporates geography and history along with this social, environmental, climate um, kind of uh, elements. The content visibility and learning outcomes are vague, and that's across all the subjects. So if you do look at the core documents, you will see this, and we'll dig into that as we go. There's a huge concern with regard to the degradation of scholarship in favor of the kind of broader cross-curriculum social justice and environmental climate themes. And it would be a huge concern that not only are we reducing down the subject time for things like history and geography and mathematics, but then that there's also going to be cross-curricular stuff going on, which will contaminate the other subjects as well. Um, again, reducing, because we've seen this, this has happened in the USA, so it's not new. And then age appropriateness. We are talking particularly the stage one and stage two. So these are children that are perhaps just four, four or five years of age starting out. We have a huge concern that you're bringing on themes for such children, which are inappropriate. And I'm not talking about sexual themes. I'm talking about, you know, the climate catastrophe, um, huge, the weight of social justice and oppression in the world, uh, racism. Having those discussions with five, six and seven year olds, I think is really inappropriate. And I, we see it in the curriculum. So check the description of this video, all the documents, particularly the ones on this chart, they'll be explicitly referenced. The curriculum framework document is very important. And again, it's sections in this document, which raise alarm bells. And these are the five curriculum documents, which we went through. We talked about this briefly on the last video, again, talking about the difference between the curriculum for stages one and two, which is junior infants to second class, where you've got the heavily integrated subjects there, uh, the STEM elements, the social environmental education. And it's only when you get to third class in stages th three and four, where history and geography get now split out separately. In the secondary schools, some of the core subjects like science, geography, some languages, home economics, business studies, et cetera, have moved from core to optional. And she said that her daughter had to fight for a place in a science class. So if that's what's happening kind of in the older years, you can be sure that that's sort of what their mindset is for, for this group as well, is less of the science, history, geography, more of the other, other stuff. Yeah. And the other stuff is basically falls into two categories. It falls into SPHE, mm -hmm. which got a huge allocation in the junior cycle, and CSP, the, the kind of civics aspect, um, civic and social yeah. aspect stuff, again, which got a huge allocation, much more time. And that basically, both of those knocked out those core subjects. This is, again, where I start to get a bit concerned, particularly when you're considering the age group associated with this Um you know, again, equity, social justice, sustainable development, awareness of global challenges, climate change. Now, the democratic practices I assume they're talking about here is in the classroom. And that's a reference to the Paulo Freire critical pedagogy practices in the classroom. In this document, there's a section on pedagogy for social justice, which is critical pedagogy is one of the main met methods of teaching. And this talks about it here, education is not neutral. It's political, basically. That's the underpinning of this thing. Critical approaches. So the term critical that's been used here has to do with critical theory from the Frankfurt School. It's not to do with critical thinking. They basically see that uh, education is for political end. It's for social justice. It's not for learning. You can use names, you might want to call it indoctrination, brainwashing, whatever you want to call it, but that's what it is. This is starting to bring in elements of postmodernism in here, constructivism, critical constructivism is actually the term that's typically used. You're getting into territory 
that I'm certainly hugely uncomfortable with from a primary school perspective. You mentioned UNESCO. Yes, UNESCO fingerprints are all over this. If you go to, you go to the UNESCO website, it talks all about transformational change, talks all about social justice, references Freire and critical pedagogy. He's heavily referenced, actually, in UNESCO. And then you see this whole thing, include understanding of issues of in, in inequity, racism. You know what this a means, critical race theory. Yeah, cetera, a age, right? uh, we saw that uh, it came out in the news, I think it was about six or eight months ago, about uh, critical race theory being added, uh, proposed for Irish education. And I have the document and it talks about uh, privilege being, uh, feeling privileged if you're white, male or Irish. So Paulo Freire and these poor little children being indoctrinated by critical pedagogy, revolutionizing education through critical pedagogy. So, so people think this guy is the B's and E's. He's a Marxist, fundamentally. His, his whole view is education is for politics. Um, it's all about oppression, oppressor, oppressive. It's all about power relations. And the mechanisms for teaching, some of them are, people would say, well, it's a very modern, progressive way of teaching. But unfortunately, it can destroy your curriculum. If you read chapter 10 of his Politics of Education, he basically degrades Christian religion. And the, the religion he wants is the religion of Marxism. Being born again on the side of the oppressed is the words he uses in that book. And the other point is, if you go up on the web and do searches for education for social justice. And if you look at the kind of scholarship that sits around that in the last 10 years, and even the last 20 years, it's based on queer theory, critical race theory, post-colonial theory, and it's all based on uh, critical pedagogy at the core. But it brings in all these other radical postmodern theories, and these should not be in any classroom, in all honesty. So, and these theories specifically have oppositional oppositional positions to Western society, Eurocentrism, whiteness, right, in, in critical race theory, not to mention religion, as I mentioned already. And that's what all of these ideologies are, all of these critical race theory, colonial theory. They're there for the destruction of Western society. We can see it happening in the universities in the United States. And we're and for sure, we should not be bringing this into Irish schools. From a mother perspective, I can just see that, you know, thinking of, you know, my young children, if they were, if this was pushed into their school, you have to think about what impact that would have on a child's mental health, their well-being, yeah. their self-esteem, their sense of belonging, all the things that we strive as parents to build the child up. This just breaks them down. And we already have a huge mental health problem in this country after the last several years yes. um this would just absolutely destroy those young precious developing minds yep. this this book is referenced in report two the ncca report two document pedagogy reflects these dimensions of critical theory it's basically applying critical theory in the classroom now this is a very worrying statement it appears on page 48 of this particular book in this context critical theory questions the assumptions that societies such as the united states canada australia new zealand and the nations of the European Union, for example, are problematically democratic and free. We can see how Western societies are being targeted right now. And here it is in a book on critical pedagogy. Joe Kinchelow is kind of showing it to us what this is all about. And you can be sure that what gets taught in the classroom is that our society is intrinsically racist that we need to take out all the whiteness out of our society. We need to take out all of the kind of Eurocentric stuff out of our out of our education system and look at stuff from other places. It, it impacts your foundational learning and skills. Uh, it, it makes it very challenging to test because you're not covering fixed curriculums anymore. You're, you're, you're covering very fluid and constructed curriculums, you know, that the children actually create for themselves. The, look, the complexity and depth of content may overwhelm students. It absolutely will overwhelm young students. This is going to be core to that social and environmental subject that is in stage one and two of the primary curriculum. So these are the youngest children you're going to focus this stuff on. It's information that is way above the age that this should be taught and putting that, putting that trauma and that fear in a child's mind is very, very traumatic for them. And it will not only um, let it, uh, make them live in fear, but it will traumatize their mind where they won't even be able to absorb the actual 
things they are learning like math and geography and right. science for what what's left of it, the remnants of what's left with that. They won't be able to absorb it because they'll be in, in panic mode. Here is the comparison between critical theory and critical thinking. One side, it's all about social structures, power dynamics, social transformation, politics and activism. The other side is focusing on reasoning, decision making across in any context, whatever it is. And it's focused really on it. It's, this is an educational analytical tool. There's no political dimension to it at all. And it's not taught because they don't want people to learn the critical thinking, because if they learned the critical thinking, they might actually see what critical theory is all about and criticize it. This is when Marxism took over education. So where did all the radicals from the 60s and the 70s go? When th a lot of them went into universities and a lot of them went into teacher training and cranking out books on critical pedagogy. That's where they came. Look at the very bottom sentence there. Um, the word critical itself, which has become ubiquitous as a descriptor for left educational scholarship. The word critical, we've seen it everywhere so far. We've used it, I don't know how many times in the course of this uh, talk. There's the book, you can read it. Talks about the critical turn in education. When education became Marxist, the consequences of a postmodern critical education so to speak, if you want to use that, which means you're, all of those critical theories, the postmodern theories as well, um, this is what you're talking about, this inducing guilt and victimhood, Child, inducting children into the things like queer theory and Marxist neo-Marxist politics, politics of victimhood and oppression, mm -hmm. of liberal sexuality. Is your gender socially constructed? That's mm -hmm. postmodern view of gender, as we know, uh, divides families. Families, because basically your children are going, you're not going to recognize your children after a period of time. So this is a destroyer of childhood innocence, religious faith, any sense of security that the children have and their future happiness. Ultimately, it'll take them years to get over this. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it, it comp totally compromises their foundational learning because it's all focused on developing a critical consciousness, a racial consciousness, a queer consciousness. And uh, who's going to suffer the worst? The most vulnerable children are the ones that are going to suffer the worst. Mm -hmm. So, so much for your equity nonsense. You're going to compromise their education, steal their mm -hmm. education away from them because you mm -hmm. want to indoctrinate them. And the, the children that are going to suffer the worst, they're going to be the autistic kids, the slow learners, the dyslexic kids, the kids that need a lot of support and help. They're not going to learn anything. They're going to be totally ravaged, but it'll hurt all children. Mm -hmm. No children will come out of this unscathed. Teaching this is bullying because it's saying, no, it's... if you don't believe in this, you're homophobic, you're transphobic, you're hateful, you're racist, you're this, that, and the other. And it's yeah. like, kids are not allowed to use their critical thinking. This will actually bully them into thinking this way. So it's actually, it's a, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a bullying education, not, not anti-bullying at all. It's this la vagueness, lack of clarity in terms of what you're going to learn. Um, the, 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 it's very unclear what the progression is as you go from one age group to the next. And lo why is that surprising? Why is that surprising after what we've just gone through? And it's going to compromise the core content. That's definitely it. And we do see this as you're going to end up with a worse curriculum than you had from a, a core content learning scholarship perspective. Um, issue on in terms of minimum standards because it's providing more agency, more flexibility, um, lack of age appropriateness. We've talked about that, showing these themes, political themes for children, which are just totally unsuitable, more focused on the global world than on our children. Uh, and it's more about how to learn over what they're learning. So you've no real idea as to what the baseline is. When a, ch when a child exits primary school, we now don't really know what baseline they have in mathematics and history. Well, we actually probably have a better view in mathematics because that curriculum was developed a few years ago. But history and geography, not a clue. English, I'm not sure. Um, this is the issue. It's, you know, the curriculum being taught through different lenses, being an activist, social justice activism, environmental activism, this whole notion of critical theory, which, which, which questions everything, problematizes everything for children their gender, their sex, the climate, racism, whatever it is, homophobia, everything's a problem. So I don't think it's age appropriate and it's not pedagogically sound. And bringing in these Marxist queer ideologies, they don't mention those terms, of course, they're not going to, they're not going to use that level of language because it'd be a bit obvious. Um, I'm sorry, this is politically motivated, this curriculum. 
And then the visibility for parents. You can see it. They're going to have the lived experience, generative teams, secrecy contracts and pacts in the classroom. We've just seen it in the UK where Rishi Sunak has come out and said that parents are entitled to 100% transparency and they 100% are. And that should be happening here. I think we have to have a zero tolerance with the NCCA going forward. There should be no question of secrecy pacts. If the pedagogical approach you're using requires secrecy pacts, you need to find a different approach. That's my answer to that. Mm -hmm. There should be standard classroom materials. We should have standard books that the parents can get. So I'm sorry, this this lack of clarity and definition, it's it's not it's a non-runner. The age appropriateness and, and, and radicalization. There should be no radical theories in this thing. And not just gender theory, I'm talking post-critical uh, theory, queer theory. And again, they won't call it queer, queer theory. It's queer sexuality is what you'll get exposed to. That's what the kids get exposed to, this, this rancid queer sexuality that's not age appropriate and talks about consent for 12-year-olds to have sex with each other. That's what it's talking about. Um, the contamination needs to go. This whole notion of whole school cross-curriculum stuff. I'm sorry, we need to kick that out because that's stopping, that's again subverting parental rights and it's corrupting the subject matter. Mm -hmm. So again, no tolerance. It can't be allowed. Um, parents need to get really agitated about this because the NCCA are getting away with murder. And we've seen it from the junior cycle. We didn't know. People didn't know when they were reviewing the junior cycle what was going to happen. But we know it now. We've seen what they've done with the senior cycle. Mm -hmm. There's no transparency. Fact-based knowledge. Learning needs to be focused on this and related skills, mm -hmm. not politics and activism. And then the appropriate pedagogical approach. And then fundamentally, the, getting politics out. I just think that's what you have to do. And, and also getting age appropriateness in terms of any of the sexuality education. And again, I think the reference here to, again, Richie Sunak, and basically they're saying they're not going to have any sex education for children um, uh, less than nine. And I think that's 100 percent. I'd agree with that. The age appropriateness, everything, desired outcomes, pedagogical approach, parental visibility, significant changes are needed. And I think they need to step away, fundamentally step away from this notion of education for social justice, because that's what we're talking about. This woke agenda, this social and environmental stuff. These mm -hmm. themes of equity and social justice that are literally going throughout the entire curriculum. Uh, mm -hmm. it, this is political indoctrination. Mm -hmm. it, we know all the harms. We've talked about the potential harms for, for young minds. And it's stealing their education. It is stealing their education. I'm sorry. And it's stealing it from the most vulnerable children as well. So the curriculum, it's a shocking testimony, in my opinion, with regard to how the NCCA are now prioritizing politics over child welfare. We've seen it in the junior cycle, mm -hmm. manifestly clear. And here they're looking to do it again and do it, you know, do it times squared this time because they're going to do it right throughout every single subject and go to bring in all these totally inappropriate things, start telling five-year-olds that they've got white privilege. I'm sorry, this, this is not the way to do education. This is politics indoctrination. This is even far worse than the junior cycle concerns we had because it, it's more relentless, yeah. it's more social justice, it's more sexualization, it's more ideological, but it's age five. I mean, these children have no critical thinking yet at age five. They are so vulnerable. They're just learning to read and write, and they still believe in magic and anything that their parent or teacher tells them. This will completely poison those young minds. So every parent seeing this should be terrified, be very angry and really make a lot of noise about it. And opting out will no longer be an option because as you can see from this, it's in every single strand of education. It's not like you can opt them out of the uh, gender ideology or the pornography and the other things you could opt them out of that specific piece. This is the entire curriculum. This ideology stuff is, is corrupting minds globally in the Western world, and it's intended on taking down the Western world. And people will say, oh, that's, a, that's a, a, a conspiracy theory. Well, there is no conspiracy. I'm not saying there's a conspiracy behind it. I'm just saying this stuff has invaded uh, academia and it's, mm -hmm. it's got, and it's gone from academia into society, into institutions, into schools now mm -hmm. as well. And it's coming into our schools. It's already in them in the junior cycle. So when you learn enough about this, you'll see the truth. So hopefully people need to educate themselves. 